Hello everybody, Mr. Persian Cat here, and welcome to Europa Universalis 4. This is my favorite game, and I've been anxious to play it for a long time now. So, I've finally gotten around to doing it, and here we are. Uh, we are now in terrain mode, and this is the whole map. It's easy to see in the political mode. Uh, this is a game uh, of conquer, trade, and diplomatic relations. This is Europe. In the main, Europe is in the main focus. It's, uh, it's the grand area of the of the European countries. Is the Re Renaissance, and the main focus is here. But you can also play uh, hordes like Oiret and Mongolia, and uh, nations like Ming, which is uh, modern-day China, and Korea, Brunei. You can play anything you want. And... Yeah. That's just about it. And here is the New World, which is America. This is the, about the time where um, Europe started to... Um, yeah when Europe started to um, explore by um, by boat and the reason why is because uh, um, this is the rise of the Ottomans as you see in the left corner and uh, the Ottomans uh, eventually captured uh, conquered Constantinople and that left Europe with uh, no center of trade because uh, Constantinople was the center of trade uh, in that period of time and all all goods from down here India uh, was uh, gathered here at Constantinople and that was the center of trade and that disappeared uh, as you see here in the next um, event event the fall of uh, Byzantium which is uh, what led to the new world so we start in the middle of the great Europe. Um, England is uh, at war with France in the Hundred Years War, as you see here. And I'm gonna play my uh, real life country, which is Norway. I'm from Norway, and I'm gonna play in Norway, and I'm gonna win. That's an wind. I'm gonna wind. I'm gonna blow us to wind. And you have the ability down here to set a random new world because we know that if we um, are Norway and we explore here we know we're gonna find Greenland and we know we're gonna find Canada but if we take random new world it would generate a whole new random world which we won't see until we discover it and that's probably good Iron Man mode that's the mode where you can't yeah um, the mistakes you do, you do for life, um, and I don't think that's a good idea for a, a let's play of Norway, because right here, as you see, it's Muscovy and Novgorod. Muscovy usually uh, conquers Novgorod and forms Russia, and Russia is really pain in the ass if you play as one of the northern uh, nations, and, and that's why I want to uh, be able to do mistakes and learn from them. Uh, I don't want to save every time I go to war and, and something like that, but if I play an episode and it doesn't go well, I might do it once again. And you won't know. You won't even know this. That's the trick. That's the trick, baby. That's the trick. Here are my options. No bonus bonuses. AI difficulty. Hard. Let's go hard. Let's go hardcore. Lucky nations, no. Yeah, dynamic province uh, names. That means that, uh, you know, as Norway, if I conquer an English uh, territory, it will get a Norwegian name. And that's cool. That's cool. So, yeah. Great. Let's begin. 1444, Rise of the Ottomans. 
and Norway. Yeah, and I can mention that Norway is in the personal union with uh, Denmark and along with Sweden. So this here is the northern powerhouse at this point. And we have to break, uh, break off that at some point, but for right now uh, we're too weak to, to do so. So we have to uh, build our nation and maybe strike when Denmark is weak. I'm just gonna move my tablet a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna drink some milk. I heard you get, get really strong if you drink a lot of milk, so, so I drink milk all the time now. Great! Okay, this is um, um, this is the landscape. You know Norway, the fjords and the mountains and the long coastline. And that's about it. <laughs> I live here in real life, in Agder. It's called Aust Agder. And if you want to say it in Norwegian, it's Aust Agder. So, yeah, good luck saying that in Norwegian. I don't know why you should say that in Norwegian. It doesn't make sense. Uh, Akers, uh, Akershus, or Akershus, uh, is, um, is, um, yeah, it still exists today, but Oslo is right here. Uh, it's basically Oslo. Uh, if you go to Oslo, you can see the, uh, uh, the um, castle. Which was uh, Akershus, Akershus Castle. Oh my god, I'm on a rant here. Okay, we have... This is our relations with the uh, countries. We can click on anything we like. And this is our capital, as you see here. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a tour uh, of things to do. And yeah, this is the map. This is the map we know. We know that Algiers exists because we can see them. We have heard about them and yeah. So countries like China and stuff, we don't know that they exist yet. We are not that uh, developed. We are a Catholic country. Um, as you can see down here, we got a religious map mode and almost all of Europe is Catholic. There are some orthodoxy here and here, which is uh, Byzantium and uh, the Russian states. And you see the Muslims are down in the south here. Back to the political map mode. Um, let's see how our position is. We got some land here called Jamtland, called Jamtland. And we got really bad uh, base tax. This is the base tax. And yeah, we don't make a lot of money, I suspect. No, we are in minus. And we got some islands here. And this is very good. This is Orkney Isle. And uh, from here, we can board the English Isles very easy, the British Isles. So that's a very, a very good uh, island to have. We also got the Chetlands and uh, Faröyne, which is in the region. Faröyne, I don't know what you call them in English. And yeah, this is our liege lord, overlord, and I guess we kind of have to suck up to them. They also own the Holstein region. Um, there's a lot of history here between Denmark and uh, and Germany, uh, in which uh, they both think they or uh, mean they own the territory. And there was some deal, and I think Denmark got Schleswig, and Germany got Holstein. I'm not sure. And here's the Gotlands. Uh, which is occupied by Danish pretender rebels. Rebels can you find uh, all across the map. Rebels are uh, people... Um, are terrorists. Yeah. Like the Islamic State. 
people. Hey, we want to do stuff. And they do stuff. And they die. Most probably. And yeah, Lapland. It's um, Sami culture. It's Sami here too. But they are shamanist. There is different, uh, different religions within a uh, cat Catholic uh, country. Uh, so if you set your uh, religion to Catholic, as I have here, there might be some other territories that uh, worships other gods. Shamanists are, uh, it's like uh, a kind of witchcraft type of thing. Anyway, uh, this is Barks. This is um, the uh, this is a light chip, and they can protect trade. We get trade nodes, uh, like here in Lubeck. It's a trade node where I got eleven uh, trade power. The higher the trade power, the more money I get. There is another one here too in the North Sea. And here I got 47 and that's cool but why do I transfer huh that's um, because you can transfer or collect and I think I'll collect here and I'll send my ships to protect my uh, trade in the North Sea and this is my ship uh, early Carrix is uh, the really heavy ships and cogs are for carrying regiments or um, other people this is my army at the moment G don't got any leader and um, I'll probably do something about that later but it costs points. We get points here up in the left corner. Administrative uh, points, diplomatic power, military power. These are um, powers we can get. And points we can get. And every turn we get that much points. Um, this is some um, things from uh, Res Rebu Republica. Republica. Res Republica. Res Publica. I don't remember. It's one of the new DLCs that I haven't gotten into yet. Uh, we might do some fun with that later. But here you see our uh, monthly income of points. And if we are to get an advisor, we get one extra point in which uh, the uh, advisor uh, is... Uh, what kind of advisor is this? So yeah, it's a whole lot of stuff. Here's uh, the income and all the fun things and trade technology we need to uh, get the national ideas uh, group which is uh, administrative technology for to get ideas and ideas will unlock a whole new set of options uh, to uh, to go forward and these are our missions and we need to take a missions and fortify Holgoland Let's see, Holgoland is up here. Okay. Uh, these are building regiments. And if I want to fortify Holgoland, I'll go here on this production interface. And I can choose whatever I want to build. And I want to build an earth rampart in Holgoland. But I lack one. Um, ducket which is uh, the va um, value here so I need to get some money going so let's get the money going I'm not out of war at the moment so I wouldn't need that much army maintenance and fleet maintenance is um, do I have to keep up because uh, the fleets um, uh, are going to be working the barracks the light ships which are going to protect trades the trade here uh, will need a uh, high fleet maintenance because it's uh, at work and it works bad if it don't have any of the sh stupid things this is something we can go into later it's stability and uh, 
and war exhaustion which uh, which if you are in a war for a very long time it will go up and it will uh, give you some penalties and stability is how stable your nation is um, and that's that's a really um, benefiting uh, thing to to have in the plus and this is all about rebels and and stuff religion you saw that and this is our military uh, situation we got a low army tradition the higher the army tradition the better generals you can um, get so yeah there you have it we have minus prestige prestige is uh, how uh, how you kind of how uh, you no I don't know how to explain it I don't have the vocabulary to explain it but um, it's like cred in some way and you need it to be in the plus but it's not a crisis and this is legitimacy legitimacy is uh, good and it gives you a ton of fun stuff but it doesn't really matter that much it's and this is the manpower this is important this is how many people not you have not the people you have, but the people you can afford to train. So I can afford to train if I end up in a war. And I lose this 6,000 here. I have um, quite a lot of uh, more uh, soldiers I can uh, train. So this is a very good modifier. Anyway, fortify how hollow Goland sure let's go let's send a diplomat oh offer alliance didn't know you could offer alliance within a within a union but but I've never played Norway before so sure great Yeah, okay, now we have an alliance with Sweden, and that's good. Uh, I think we should uh, improve relations with Denmark and Novgorod at the moment. Okay, Novgorod has chosen Denmark and Muscovy as rivals. Oh, this is bad. There should be a stable government. Uh, there are several leading members of the government are deeply worried about some changes proposed how the realm should be ruled They demand to stop such outrageous reforms based on the tried and provide approved uh, traditions Naturally avoiding mentioning how changes would impact their own power base blah 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 This is um, not good uh, We'll lose the prestige I think because uh, the, the PowerPoint is uh, really crucial in the beginning Moscow only has a Novgorod as the, their uh, rivals and Denmark has oh they chose Scotland England and Novgorod I cannot have uh, any of uh, I, I can't have um, rivals because I'm a subject nation of Denmark anyway Denmark always choose Lithuania as uh, their first ally. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Some things will never change. I'll suck up to Austria to begin with. I think that is a... No? Okay. Okay. I did a lot of things. I didn't know. And let's speed this up. We need the money. Okay, now we can build the Earth Rampart in Hologoland. Okay, Muscovy declared war on Novgorod, which is just to be expected. At this point, uh, Muscovy um, 
has uh, way more troops and way better um, military than Novgorod. And as you see, Novgorod is the northern part of uh, Russia, which is uh, the, well, not the most beneficial part. Although you have uh, St. Petersburg, I think, here, and you got the Novgorod here, and you can show province, and you see eight, base tax 8. And so they have some good um, regions, but I don't think they will uh, manage to fight off the Muscovy, Muscovine army. Okay, we got, we are in the Papal Sea game, in which we are going to choose a guy we want to be a uh, Pope. We choose this guy, and we got this guy. Terini, he's our guy. I'm gonna watch this guy so much. Right now, there's nothing really to do. We just have to wait. We have a really bad income, and there is no not much happening. Dan Denmark will probably go to war soon for either Danzig or uh, Ursel, um, which is one of the earliest um, regions they will attack, and we might go and help them, but. For now, we are just a subject nation, and we are fighting for Denmark. It's wise to... It's not wise to do otherwise. And we kind of want to play traditionally. So, I, I can play the game, and every time Denmark goes to war, I won't help them and charge them when they're weak. But, that's not so fun. Let's see uh, what other missions we can get. Improve relations with Scotland, at least 100. Is that possible? Yeah, it is highly possible. Oh, they want province. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll probably do that. But I won't accept it yet. Do, do. Do, do. A new cardinal! Oh! This is serious? Man, I got lucky as hell! Um, I invested 5 points in a random cardinal. Usually you have to invest maybe 50, 60. You have to use a lot of time to get a cardinal. But mine was just. Um, Mine just became a cardinal after I used 5 points and I'm the luckiest guy in the world. If we control uh, uh, the majority, no, um, if we are the country with the most cardinals, we control the papacy, the courier controller, uh, which, is now, uh, which now is England, which got two. And if we got another one, we will be able to compete for this... Um, title and we get all the bonuses you see below right now maybe this one the Livonian order got three and they won't be able to keep them all I think are you just standing there where's the fucking ram where's the what what forget about Forget about it. Oh no, Salzburg. What happened? I thought you were friends. Where is Salzburg? This is Salzburg. Yeah, you know. Okay, it's the heir to the throne. Christian, yeah. This is Salzburg. This is Austria. They are, are at war right now. And as you see, Austria is attacking... Um, Salzburg, the city of Salzburg, and if they conquer it, Salzburg is lost. It's pretty easy. But there are some modifiers that will make things harder for you to expand and, and we'll get to that later.
this place um, is not a part of Norway anymore. Uh, this is, I think, this is the part with uh, Göteborg and, and those big cities in Sweden. Um, that doesn't exist. Uh, this is not a uh, part of Norway anymore, and this is not either. But all of these other areas here are still a part of Norway today, so Norway was just slightly bigger. And yeah, those islands are long gone. Gain one stability, yeah! This is good. This is good. You see below. Auto saving, yeah. And Iceland is of course an independent nation. There are 12 people living in Iceland today and they are all very happy about the situation. <laughs> yeah, there's not much to do right now. We are 31 uh, in the total score rank. And that's not bad. Okay, we got some more money. Let's see what we can do. Become Papal Controller? That would be fun. Are we... No, we're no near close. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, I've been really sick lately. It's not even funny. But yeah. We should... Uh, Hmm, free prestige. Hmm, I don't know what missions we are going to do to take, but I might. Uh, I will take a new mission in the next episode. Uh, this is it. Oh, this is interesting. Against Tver. Tver is this bit, uh, little bit of. Stay here. If they are uh, they are striking when Novgorod is weak, and you can kind of s just see the the glorious nation of Grod slowly get into pieces. But I hope that uh, Muscovy will will um, uh, be fought back at some point. And that we can keep Novgorod for a little while longer because Russia is too um, frightening. And at some point, um, there is no, there is no way back. It just had to happen. So, yeah, this is the episode. I'm Mr. Persian Cat, and I'm sneaking out behind your back. If you want to see more Norway, hear about stuff that I tell you, well, subscribe to my channel. Leave a like, I would appreciate it a whole lot. And I'll see you in the next episode.